Hey everybody, my name is Wyatt and I'm Fur to Tunes and it's been a while since I made one of these type of videos but I love doing them and I just found over the last few weeks I have been helplessly obsessed with this guy's music so it's gotten to the point where if I don't make this video I'm just doing myself a disservice. The passion is in me, it's raw, it's here so let's get into it. Now if you don't know Lil Ugly Mane aka Travis Miller aka Bedwetter aka Vudmerk aka Sean Kemp aka Fat Greg the Breadman my personal favorite aka Christ. Now I'm not here to do a history lesson. This is going to be much more focused on how I got into his music, why I think it's so great, and why I think more people shouldn't judge a book by its title. If you're familiar with the channel at all, this will be a bit more of a my experience with Little Ugly Main type of video, but I do talk quite a lot about the music because it's crazy. But I do think he deserves a little bit of explaining, especially to the people who maybe have never heard of him and are weirded out by the name. I don't blame you. If you're interested at all, I will link two videos down below that pretty much explain everything you would need to know about Mr. Maine. They helped me get all the info I needed about his discography because I find his projects get fairly intimidating and pretty daunting the more you dive into him. Especially with all of those aliases I just mentioned. <laughs> like, where do you start, right? Basically, if I can try my best to sum it all up, and again, for all the hardcore Ugly Mane fans that may or may not be watching this video, I've only been a fan for like maybe a year now. I haven't heard every single one of his projects, like not even close really. So please correct me in the comments if I fuck up any information, and please feel free to add any more information about him or his music that you may feel is essential as I don't think many of the Ferda family has too many ugly main fans and I'm looking to change that. But to sum it up if I can obviously we'll get more into individual albums as we get into how I got into them but he made a lot of very interesting and dark Memphis inspired rap music early in his career most of which is still very impressive and more than intriguing. Then in the mid 2010s ish he started showing off more of what he could do and proved very seamlessly that it is impossible to box him into any one or two genres at all. This dude makes all kinds of music from black metal to techno to alt rock to indie pop to hardcore hip hop to harsh noise. The list goes on. The sound of his career progressed while he dropped music under, I showed many different names, until most recently he released a new album under the Lil Ugly main name, Volcanic Bird Enemy and The Voiced Concern. And this is where my journey began. I had heard his name a few times over the years, but admittedly the name turned me off. I mean, it is a pretty dumb fucking name. I, I understand now why he uses it, probably for the specific intent to turn people away. It's pretty well known that he is the type of artist who does not want any bit of fame or limelight. He just made a shit ton of music that happened to resonate with a lot of people. And here we are. So yeah, I just never gave Lil Ugly Mane a chance because even though I always heard amazing things about his debut album, Mr. Thug Isolation, which we will get to, but when Volcanic Bird Enemy dropped, here comes all this buzz about him again. And especially last year, I was really trying to listen to everything I could, stay on top of new releases. So after some consideration, I decided to just say, fuck all the Mr. Thug, everything I've heard about him. I'm gonna just dive into this new album. It was the first thing I ever heard from him. Now, I feel like Ugly Mane fans will be like, bro, that is not the best move, but I, it worked for me somehow. I can't say I loved it on first listen, but I was unimaginably intrigued front to back, not a second where I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. A lot of moments didn't work for me, but in the next few months, especially with winter approaching, I was getting into a very weird and very depressing time in my life. And boy, oh boy, if this wasn't the soundtrack. While working 10 hour days on a freezing cold farm doing Christmas events, this thing got put on repeat any chance I got. Should I do it? I mean, nah. For months and months, and still to this day, I am enamored and continuously blown away by the genre blending on this album. The musical ideas, the songwriting, and the sampling is seriously unlike anything I've ever heard before. There are countless songs or artist similarities that you can attach to certain moments or sounds, but there is no real way to describe this album's sound as a whole without sounding like a music nerd that is just so full of himself. This album brings an insane 
obscene amount of nostalgia from the first time I heard it up until now, even looking back on that time in my life that was like, what, eight months ago? I can't explain why, but we would seriously be here for hours if I were to go track for track explaining every emotion I felt and situation that a song applied to or brought more life to. But I just... I am trying to say I don't think I will ever get over this album. The production, sampling, and just sheer musical ideas on here are some of the most creative things I've ever heard. Some instrumentals are so whimsical and playful, but the whole album, especially lyrically, feels extremely depressive. In that way, it feels like a whacked out modern day pet sounds in that sense. And in this, it provides a seamless comfort. For anyone who can relate to a lot of the things he's saying, the lyrics can be very poetic or very straightforward, but the songs always seem to come together to bring a very specifically non-specific mood or emotion. I know that makes no fucking sense, and on first listen, a lot of these songs might make no sense, like Clapping Seal the first time I... But from front to back, it is an absolute rabbit hole dive into the mind of someone who has seemingly dealt with depression their whole life. Shedding their skin and bare bones on how it affects them and those around them. I'd like to quote Rate Your Music user Luciella as this album is the most accurate descriptor of life that I've seen. It is the bitter and the sweet, the pain and the pleasure of life all in one. It is the perfect outlet to express sorrow while being reminded of the value in life at the same time. It is the sound of someone who has become okay with being detrimentally depressed almost 24-7. That sounds so fucking sad, and it is, but again, when I was super depressed in the winter getting over all this, this album just felt like that comforting, depressive outlet that, you know, didn't really make me feel better, but it was just exactly what I needed. Because there are those albums I find that are sad, but they uplift you and help you get out of the depression, and then there are those albums that just let you sulk in it. This is the perfect bridge I can imagine between both of them. I know a common complaint I see about this album is that his, his vocals are very lacking, and I do, yeah, they're quite monotone on quite a few tracks, but I find they're just perfectly honest and real. He's not trying to go crazy or hit notes or anything. He's singing from the soul, and he knows his boundaries. There's a similar feeling here I get from Mac Miller and Young Lean's music, where I find, like, I have a very similar vocal range, so when I'm singing along to most of these tracks, it's like I become the song. I can barely distinguish my voice from theirs. Obviously, that is a very personal observation, but this is a phenomenon I've been interested in since I realized it a few years ago. And again, those three artists give me that feeling more than anything. If you're interested at all in me expanding upon that, because I think it's, it's, it's a pretty surreal experience. Y'all just let me know. Anyways, I was helplessly addicted to this album for months, and I kept telling myself, people on Twitter kept telling me, you gotta listen to his other stuff. And part of me felt like, man, his other stuff is hip-hop? Like, I love hip-hop, but there's no way it's as good as this. This is just one of the most out-there albums I've ever heard. And I can't lie, none of his other stuff I'm nearly as obsessed with with this album, but that's just more so a testament to how insane this album is, not a knock to the other stuff. When I finally went back and took a night and listened to Mr. Thug Isolation, I was overjoyed by how seamless the jazz rap, Memphis and cloud rap, chopped and screwed sound all blended together, all with these overly obsessed absurd, braggadocious lyrics to the point where it's almost cartoony or gimmicky, but that's also a large part of the appeal. It's as hilarious as it is hard-hitting. It's tongue-in-cheek, but at the same time there is a sheer talent and very clear vision of sound that comes through and makes it very easy to see the appeal, even if it's not your thing. The jazz sampling and druggy atmospheres layered through so many of these beats are purely intoxicating. There's no better way to describe it. Ugly main delivery and lyrics definitely won't be for everyone, but I feel like you either love it or you hate it. Me personally, I fucks with it. Breeze em Out is especially a standout for me. Very uh, unique track amongst the rest, but serious shit definitely lays out the vibe of the album very clearly. So give it a shot. It would be a crime if I didn't touch on Uneven Compromise, which I listened to shortly after. An almost 12 minute song with various changes and one of the best storytelling rap verses I have ever heard. This song paired with On Doing an Evil Deed Blues, another 
another similarly structured song from him are by far and away the best rapping performances I've heard from him. And I'd honestly say these two songs are easily the best introduction to his music. Just all around, it is extremely impressive. Again, especially the rapping. After a while, I went on to check out the infamous three-sided tapes going in order, which, if you don't know, are more or less Lucy's extras, demos, songs he forgot about or didn't love. Big compilation mixtapes of all kinds of material, and this is where, like I said earlier, he proved that you cannot box him in. I loved the first tape. Although walking through my neighborhood high as hell late at night turned to be a quick detrimental experience when it transitions from one of the smoothest beats I have ever heard into this. Yeah, that took a couple years off of my life, just sucked me so far in and just blasted me. I, I, I'm shocked I didn't have a heart attack. My body literally just forced my headphones off. Like, I've never had a jump scare from music like that. It was a genuine survival instinct that just kicked right in. Other than that, like, this tape is great, great, don't get me wrong, especially for new listeners that have heard MTI or Volcanic Bird Enemy or any of his albums and just want to dive deeper down his rabbit hole of sounds, this is a great place to start. Volume 2 to me is kind of more of the same. I can't say I'm in love with it, definitely a lot of highlights of course, I personally just haven't returned to it too much, but the third side of tape is easily the biggest of them all in every sense. I've seen a lot of people say this is his best project, period. I wholeheartedly disagree. Personally, again, it's an immensely interesting listen. It's almost two and a half hours of just pure, unfiltered fuckery from Ugly Mane. It's like almost any genre you can think of is being touched on within this two and a half hour runtime. So many amazing moments, but I'd be lying to myself if I didn't say I think there are quite a few, like, dog shit songs in the track list. I'm sorry y'all, like don't kill me, like it's it's bound to happen just with the nature of this project and with it being so long. Maybe I'm just not the biggest fan of his because this is just kind of when I realized, okay, like I'm not gonna love everything he puts out. The ambient drone songs are pretty painful as someone who loves those genres. I think he's got a solid foundation on these songs, but they either just drag out too long or are just flat out boring or annoying. The black metal songs here are admirable, but especially on volume one, they just come off very flat. They're good songs, but they just don't have this oomph, and I think the mixing just comes off. I'm not sure what it is really, but I just feel like I just can't get into it all the way. The techno songs came as a huge surprise to me, especially Bitrate from the third side of tape. Banger song, kind of reminds me of like a Crystal Castle style production. They aren't the most original or unique electronic songs you'll ever hear. They're fairly derivative, but regardless, they slap. I'm not as big of a fan of the three sided tape series as most fans seem to be. I definitely return to a lot of songs here again the highs are fucking high god tier some of his best work period but I just think from a front to back experience they are just too messy for their own good especially with the third side of tape the flow of it from track to track can be horrible <laughs> This brings us to my most recent dive in with Oblivion Access, an album I was intimidated by because of everything I heard about it, but going into it, I got a lot more out of it than I was expecting. Definitely one of the darkest rap albums I think I've ever heard. It's definitely up there, especially lyrically, dealing so much with self-destructive mental health, drugs, and escapism. It's a fairly daunting listen and often drags you to some pretty terrifying parts of your own psyche. It's a very heavy listen, and for that reason alone, I don't see myself returning to it too often, but it will definitely stay at the back of my mind anytime I want or need to give myself an existential wake-up call. Because this thing just 
beats dark thoughts into you and relentlessly forces you to confront the hell that lives deep in your mind. In that way, it reminds me a lot of albums like Atrocity Exhibition by Danny Brown and Mutant by Arca. Just in the similar way, these albums make me feel like I am violently exercising demons out of my body and mind. Mr. Main flexes his harsh noise chops a lot more in this album, and I can't say I'm the biggest fan of it, but it fits with this album more than it ever has in his discography from what I've heard. It fits the vibe of this album perfectly. This thing is whacked out, and again, the highs on here are some of his best ever. I found his rapping on this one as serious as a lot of the subject matter is. It's almost like just as goofy as it is on Mr. Thug Isolation. For many different reasons, but I find his delivery here and his cadence, if you're not in the mood for it, it can kind of come off as just kind of like, okay, like what the fuck is going on? The way Grave Within a Grave details what seems to be this existential psychedelic trip with so much detail and veracity, it's intense and haunting. I've only listened to this album front to back I think twice now, so again I haven't really given it a full digestion like I have with MTI or especially Volcanic Bird Enemy. I can't even tell you how many times I've listened to that one. But I will say I don't remember being a fan of how the album ends, it's just a little too okay. Like, like, okay. Anyone who knows the last song, you probably get what I mean. I'm still hoping it grows on me, but regardless, the rest of the album is just so, wow, dark and in your face, but at the same time, it, it feels like I'm possessed by something, like, I don't know. Overall, like, I, I think that's all I want to say without me just rambling on about specific songs and sounds and all that. Lil Ugly Mane is just such an interesting artist with so much perplexing music, and the fact that he just stays to himself so much, doesn't want any part of the limelight, he really just likes to make music and stick to himself, like, it's just so admirable, and I had to make this video just geeking out over his constantly impressive music. Because again, like I said, the passion was there, and especially around the time I was going through the three-sided tapes, I was just helplessly, I could not believe how much I was listening to an artist named Lil Ugly Mane. And again, like I mentioned at the start of the video with all of his different names and aliases, the videos I have linked below go into those a lot more detail. But again, like I said, with all the harsh noise music, black metal and all that, he really goes into like different little journeys on those side projects. I could even see myself doing a full blown like my experience with Volcanic Bird Enemy and The Voice Concern because uh, just going into it and just dissecting that album to a T because really in less than a year it's become one of my favorite albums of all time and I still can't believe I'm saying that but it's real shit. That album is an anomaly and a half. <laughs> Thank you so so much for watching if you made it this far mwah, mwah, I love you appreciate you I made this video for the sole purpose of just kind of giving a bit more of a personal touch on the music that we know and love and sort of just briefly explaining the music rather than the artist for people who are trying to get into him I cannot recommend Mr. Thug Isolation and Volcanic Bird Enemy whichever one you feel like you will enjoy more that's the one. But again, uneven compromise and on doing an evil deed blues, god tier songs. Uh, it, I say start there, personally. But if this video happens to reach the Lil Ugly Main fans, please show some love, tell me. I hope y'all enjoyed, first and foremost. He's got like a literal cult fan base almost and you know I, it's nothing but love I just wanted to you know geek about this music again I've just become such a huge fan in such a short amount of time but please let me know your favorite song or favorite album from Lil Ugly Mane and why please go into detail share some stories about how you got into him please like I really really want to know that because again for me for so many years I just heard Mr. Thug Isolation goofy ass cover Lil Ugly Mane oh yeah that sounds like an artist I want, I'm gonna like. And lo and behold, I will slap myself for being that stupid. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its title. <laughs> also, if you are interested, you can join the Discord down below. I've been trying to plan a listening party for Volcanic Bird Enemy, so if y'all are interested, hop in the Discord and tell me, yo, let's do this, let's do this listening party. I've just been trying to put more people onto this album because, you know, some songs are definitely a bit too weird to just 
toss on. So you really just gotta sit down with it. It's it's an experience and a half. Again, it's such a rabbit hole album. Here I go rambling again. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all can support me on Patreon if you like. Check out more videos like this. They'll be in the description. Y'all can follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. Subscribe to stay tuned. Much love.